طيب لا يبارك فيك الله ان شاء الله بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه ومن ولاه أما بعد We continue our wasaya the wasaya of the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم to his ummah and in this wasaya in this series of wasaya mentioned in hadith Abi Hurairah and after the beautiful and insightful and deep and profound wasaya uh, necessary for every uh, Muslim believer seeking, uh, uh, insha'Allah, to have success in this life and the year after uh, that we have studied today. We have another wasiya from the same hadith and this part in which the Prophet ﷺ said to Abi Huraira, وَأَحِبَّ لِلنَّاسِ مَا تُحِبَّ لِنَفْسِكَ تَكُنْ مُسْلِمًا In this hadith, the Prophet ﷺ saying, uh, you know, uh, as a wasiya, love or like or love for people what you love for yourself, you be a believer or you be a Muslim. In this hadith, he said, you be a Muslim. And this hadith, uh, as you know, uh, there's another hadith uh, very close to this one. قَالَ لَا يُؤْمِنُ أَحَدُكُمْ حَتَّى يُحِبَّ لِأَخِيهِ مَا يُحِبَّ لِنَفْسِهِ So here, look, the Prophet Wasallam said Muslim. I mean, you will not be a Muslim till you love for people what you love for yourself. And the other one, one will not be a believer till he loves for his brother, the sister for his sister, and what they love for themselves. And uh, the hadith really, uh, as we have said um, uh, before, the way that is understood is always about something that we like in your hand, and you will not be a true believer till you will be able to share them. And that's not really the meaning of the hadith. Uh, the meaning of hadith is more that you want to share it does not mean that if you have something valuable and you love it, you have to give it. That's the infaq. You know, that's a totally different aspect. But here, that uh, whatever you have, you wish that you, your people around you, they will have it. If you have health, you want everybody to be healthy. If you Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give you rizq, you want everybody to have rizq. If you have something you like, you wish that everybody has it, and so on. However, uh, the wasiya has uh, uh, different uh, elements to make a believer fulfill this wasiya. So this element and aspect is like really is a comprehensive way of acting. That's what makes a person to fulfill this hadith. And this was the, you know. So there is something deep inside that someone need to first uh, practice, uh, strive to have, and then this is a part becomes of the characteristic of a believer, something that is embedded in one's character, spontaneous. It's not like forcing to do it. You say, today I need to love my, for my brother, for example, or love my, for myself. No, this is something that it goes with you wherever you are. And it's part of your character. It's not something that you, like the Salat, you said, I'm going to pray Salat al-Isha. Today I'm going to love for my brother. No, this is something that becomes part of your behavior and the character. How to do that? How to do that? We have first to know what are the rights of Muslim on you. What are the rights on a Muslim, on his brother Muslim, and the rights on the, you know, of brotherhood, of sisterhood, and so on. And that's, look at the hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu how we need to be behaving to each other. That's what makes us to fulfill this wasi. So, you cannot, for example, someone will be uh, backbiting his brother, and he will to make this wasi. No, it does not work. Why? Because you don't want anybody to backbite you. Therefore, you are, you know, going and conflicting this wasi. As you don't want anybody to backbite you, then do not backbite your brother or your sister. So here, uh, we'll go through the, uh, uh, in brief, as we have mentioned last time, and we go into detail, bi'idnillah, uh, today some part, and we'll finish, insha'Allah. Uh, if we do not finish today, we'll finish next time, bi'idnillah ta'ala. So, وقال, uh, uh, and uh, uh, what are the rights 
قال أن تسلم عليه إذا لقيته وتجيبه إذا دعاك you greet him back when you, or you greet him when you see him uh, you, you answer the, the call and the invitation for the Muslim and to you know to shamitu إذا عطس التشميتو is to wish for him when someone sneezes you ask for him the rahma al hidayah قال أن to visit uh, visit uh, when he's sick or she's sick وتشهد جنازته إذا مات and you observe and you go in the janaza when uh, the, he dies وتبر وإبرار قسمه إذا أقسم عليه if he will say for example something والله oath you know say he said for example والله I want you to do this he said you know he said والله I want you to do it so he said, just birra qasamah, and birra qasamah, do not break his qasam. You know, accept, do whatever he make the oath for, so you not uh, make him to, to fast three days, or to, like, to pay the expiation of, of breaking the oath. Qala, thumma wa tansah lahu idha stansahak, he'd ask you for advice, you advise him. Wa tahfaduhu bi dhahri al-ghaybi idha ghaba anka, and to protect him when he's absent, to protect his honor, to not, you know, have people talk ill about him and, and so on. And when I say him, it goes also for her, right? قَالَ وَتَكْرَهُ مَا تَكْرَهُ لِنَفْسِكَ And you, you, whatever you dislike for yourself and you hate for yourself, you have to hate it for your brother. Yeah. You don't like it. وَهَذَا هُوَ مَا أَشَارَ إِلَيْهِ النَّبِيُّ صلى الله عليه وسلم. This is what the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم had mentioned مثل المؤمنين في توادهم وتراحمهم كمثل الجسد الواحد. So the believer, you know, the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم bring us, you know, give us a parable. They are in the way that kind to each other, loving each other, having mercy, mutual mercy between each other is like one body, like one single body. If one part of the body is aching or in pain, the whole body will be in pain. And that's how, subhanAllah, the body of the believer and the Muslim uh, should be according to the son of the Prophet Sallallahu The believer and the, to the believer, like subhanAllah, is one solid structure. They holding each other to not fall. And this is, this is how you love for your brother for what you love for yourself. This is the meaning of it. It's not about few things that you have. And you said, oh, I will not be a believer till I give it or I share it with my brother. No, these are the foundation of the meaning of the hadith. So let's go step by step what a believer need to have. قَالَ وَمِنْهَا أَن تَتَوَاضَعَ لِكُلِّ مُسْلِمٍ وَلَا تَتَكَبَّرْ عَلَيْهِ So what are the main virtue, the main values that every one of us has to have toward his brother, uh, toward his sister. قال أولا التواضع to be humble, to be modest for every Muslim. And it's enough for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to say Allah hates and does not like those who are boasting, those who are arrogant. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam قال إن الله تعالى أوحى إلي أن تواضعوا حتى لا يفخر أحد على أحد Be humble to each other So nobody will be boasting and showing off on the others وعن أبي أوفى كان رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم يتواضع لكل مسلم ولا يتكبر أن يمشي مع الأرملة والمساكين فيقضي حاجته
anyone said ill thing to him, anyone mocking him, he never, the Prophet Sallallahu reacted or retaliated or he avenged himself. No, he only, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, retaliated for things that touch Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Taala and the deen of Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Taala. It was narrated that Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Taala said to Yusuf Alayhi Salam, قَالَ بِعَفْوِكَ عَنْ إِخْوَتِكَ رَفَعْتُ ذِكْرَكَ فِي الدَّارَيْ Look how uh, Yusuf alayhi salam, the Prophet, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala added him higher rank because of his forgiveness he had to his brother. That what, you know, and look what the, the brother of Yusuf did for him. Qala kama yaqul ibn Abbas radiyallahu anhuma ma afa rajulun an mazlamatin illa zadahu allahu izz. You know, whenever a person had the ability to forgive a person, another person, that they transgress them, that they've been unjust for them, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give you more honor, more subhanallah pride, more, more respect from others. So all of this element, part of loving for your brother, for what you love for yourself. You know, and this is how we come to practice it. You see, come to practice it. Uh, so to be humble, uh, to not uh, listen to the namima, to not listen to the backbite. Why? Because you hate it for yourself, so you have to hate it for your brother and your sister. Uh, more, another element in, in the implementation or the way how to implement this hadith, this great wasiyah. And also that you will be nice and kind for every Muslim. In a hadith, رأس العقل بعد الدين التودد إلى الناس واصطناع المعروف إلى كل بر وفاجر. The brain of the deen, you know, after uh, the, uh, the brain or the, the greatest of the matters after being upright on the deen is to be nice to the people. And not only nice to people, it's like you make, you create that kindness in a way that you want to do an action. To, to be nice to them, not like nice to them in a passive way, no, in an active way, in a proactive way. Someone, for example, you see someone, you, say, you, you rush to do something, to give him something or so on. So the Prophet is like you creating, you, you make up something good just to, to be nice to the people. For every good person, even evil people. Uh, why subhanallah the evil people that is, is I mean you don't know that they are evil but uh, it, it is a way of, uh, of subhanallah soften their heart soften their heart to listen to you because the next time you say something good they will listen to it uh, and you, you might be subhanallah the cause of helping them to be guided and to make tawbah uh, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam يقول المسلم أخ المسلم لا يظلمه ولا يسلمه ومن كان في حاجة أخيه كان الله في حاجته I mean the Muslim is the brother Muslim he does not transgress them or does not you know betray them and uh, whoever he is in, in trying to fulfill the need of his brother Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will fulfill his needs and whoever who help a Muslim to, to, to have him, you know, uh, to help him for a relief, for a situation that he's going through or difficulty, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will lift a difficulty on him in the day of, uh, on the day of the, of the, of the resurrection, day of Qiyam. Uh, the other things, you know, from the etiquette, and this is very important, very important in uh, how to be the believers who are respecting each other, loving each other, because without this, it's not going to be possible, okay? Um, all this, what we're saying, are the requirement of fulfilling that wasi. Uh, one of the adab that are requirement is to take the permission, yeah? First, to have the permission uh, before entering you know, uh, even for, for, you know, entering on, on one spouse, it requires permission. The children is automatic. They have to ask the permission before they enter the room or things, you know. 
So subhanallah, even, uh, you know, to enter on, on your own spouse, you know, for those married ones, they need to take the permission because one of them might not be uh, disliked to be seen in certain situations. And this is subhanallah what keep the ishra and strengthen the bonds into, into the family. For the Muslim, it is required to ask the permission. You know, you cannot, for example, someone um, at any place, but behind door, you have to ask the permission. The love that the companion, Ridwan Allah, they have for the Prophet, not only they ask the permission, but the way how they knock the door, they use their, subhanAllah, with their nails. You know, very light from the love that they have for him and the respect. So into the hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu to ask the permission three times. Three times, if there is no answer, that's it. You go, you leave. And apply it on everything. Or apply it on everything. For example, if you call a person, he didn't answer. You don't keep calling, calling, calling. He didn't answer. Why are you calling? That's subhanAllah. Do you like that people keep calling you? You see, very, this is istadhan. This is from Adabul istadhan. Now, what, I mean, if you send a text, if you don't call, if you know, please, and, and explain it why. You know, sometimes people, they say urgent. What is urgent for you is not urgent for your brother. And what you think like is urgent, it might not be even urgent. So this is subhanAllah from the way how you think when you're going to talk to your brother or the sister for her sister to, to have, you know, to protect their peace. Someone, you know, uh, enter, uh, knock the door, and uh, I mean, and he knows the person is inside. The person comes out, he said, uh, he's not here, for example. That person is going to like the whole community, they're going to hear about it. You know, he ignored me, he did this, he did this. No. قَالَ وَإِنْ قِيلَ لَكُمْ فَرْجِعُوا إِرْجِعُوا Of course not, he said, someone, he said, at the door, he said, no, go back. I mean, you know. So, subhanAllah, that person, he cannot, maybe he's in a situation, he cannot even talk to you. He cannot even look at you. It's personal things. So these things are very important, especially into the society. So it's not about, we're talking about knocking the door, which is, you know, here it might be rare, but think of the phones, think of, the, of all these social medias, you know, especially even sometimes people, you are online, they tell you like, you know, five minutes he was here, you know. And then people, they want to call at the time. And they say, look, he ignored me or she ignored me. I can see that they are online. Yeah, he have a good thinking of your brother or his sister. Maybe they have it on, but they're not there. And even they are there, they don't want to talk to you. It does not, it means that they hate you. So this is, subhanAllah, adabul isti'dan. So Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhu, Abu Musa al-Ash'ari came to him. And he asked the permission, he was at home. So uh, Umar radiallahu ta'ala didn't answer. Fa, fa then he left. Then when he saw him, Umar, he was so mad. He told him, why did you leave? I was busy. He said, you know, that's, I, I did like, I asked the permission for three times, but he didn't answer, I left. Uh, you know, I left you alone. He said, no, you know, you should have waited. He said, that's the hadith of the Prophet he said, okay, give me proof. He went and he called Abu uh, Sa'id in Al-Khudri that he knows many of the hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu So he was the proof. And this is the hadith. Qala atani Abu Musa, Abu Sa'id in Al-Khudri said, Abu Musa came to me. He told me, anna Umar arsala ila an atiya. Umar, he called, you know, he said, you know, I need Abu Musa. So Abu Musa al-Ash'ari radiallahu ta'ala anhum ajma'in qala fa'ataytu babahu fasallamtu thalathan falam yarudda alay He came by his door, he said, Assalamu alaykum, Assalamu alaykum, Assalamu alaykum, he didn't answer. Qal, I left. Then Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhum qala ma mana'aka an ta'tiyana, why you didn't come when I asked for you? Qala inni ataytu fasallamtu ala babika thalathan falam taruddu. 
uh, I came and I greeted you three times by your door and you didn't answer. قال فرجعت وقد قال لي رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم استأذ إذا استأذن أحدكم ثلاثا فلم يؤذن له فليرجع. If one of you will ask the permission uh, three times, if it's not answered and not given the permission, he will should go. So this is nothing, I mean, uh, there is nothing in this like uh, my brother is neglecting me and my brother is ignoring me. We should not look at it like this. You want certain situation, subhanAllah, you don't want to talk anybody. You don't want. Even your own kids for those who are kids or someone you want to be alone. Subhanallah. And then you had a call. When you have a call, you look and you turn it off. It does mean that you're ignoring your brother. See? So think, subhanallah, this is what you like. This is what you like for yourself. When you have an issue, you want to think. You want to be alone. You don't want anybody to disturb. You're going to pick up the phone. Uh, I'm sorry, I cannot be. So it, it's, 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 subhanallah, it's not the, the sharia and the sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ will not obligate you to get beyond what you can feel. You cannot. So it is our brothers and our sister who has to take in consideration such, you know, sensitive feeling uh, that uh, all of us, we have, you know. So this is, this is from the wasi. So Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhu, he said, bring me a bayina, a qim alayya bayina, bring me a proof. That's why Abu Musa al-Ash'ari, he was looking uh, from among the company who heard this hadith, which is became since then with the proof of uh, 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 Abu Sa'id al-Khudri, uh, a way of etiquette that is implemented into the, uh, between the brothers. And it's, it is our sunnah to do it. And as I said, uh, it needs to be extended in all the ways of communication, phones and social medias and all of that, and all of that. Sometimes, you know, uh, uh, the way how we need to think about each other is with respect and with very positive thinking. And you give to your, to your brother, you know, and your sister all the excuses possible. You know, they are not in the mood to talk. They cannot. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala be with them. Make dua for them, subhanAllah. Make dua for them. And this is how we are building those requirement of a brotherhood. And we are building how we love to our brother and sister what we love for ourselves. Um, and he, he given here the very, uh, you, know, uh, you know, an insight, uh, let's say, um, about you know even someone inside his house how they need to how they need to take permission because uh, for for example household they have their kids uh, the parents they don't want their kids to see them in such a situation you know uh, the father or the mother they are alone in their room they need the one who comes they need to answer actually Allah made it part of the light the light of the iman the light that descend from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, one of the way to practice this light and to gain this light is the istadhan. In Surah An-Nur, in the ayat, the end of the ayat, Surah An-Nur, Ya ayu alladhina amalu yasta'adhin minkum, qala alladhina malakat al-atfal, wa alladhina lam yablughu al-hulm, and ma malakat aymanukum. So even the young ones, the young ones who do not know, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala obligated on them the then. So the, the older one, they know they will not do that. And this is very important. So imagine how, how re building the respect, building the uh, subhanallah, that akhlaq inside the house and outside the house. For example, you look, for example, into society that we live in, people, you know, they shower the way, you know, you know without comment. And even, subhanAllah, in the same household, they do not have that uh, modesty and shyness, you know. So look, Islam, how help us to have that respect, that honor, that, uh, that humbleness, that uh, modesty within the household and outside the household. 
and all of this, uh, uh, you know, element to build that brotherhood based on لا يؤمن أحدكم حتى يحب لأخيه ما يحب لنفسه. قال عن عطاء بن يسار أن رجلا سأل رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم فقال أستأذن على أمي قال نعم فقال الرجل إني معها في البيت A man asked the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم Should I ask permission from my mother? He said yes He said we live together in the same house قال أستأذن عليها Yes You don't enter only if you after you ask in permission قال عن جابر رضي الله تعالى عنه قال أتيت النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم في دين كان على أبي فددق فدققت على الباب فقال من ذا فقال أنا فقلت أنا جابر كيم هي هذا الإشيو about the loan and he want and he knocked the door so he said who's at the door the prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم he said he said me so the prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم he didn't like that the person says me of course, I mean, in the same household, you know who's there. But someone comes, like, you know, you, uh, you, you pick up the phone, and someone, you're calling someone, you said, uh, yes, assalamu alaikum. You say, oh, this is me. Taib, who are you? <laughs> Sometimes yeah, you suppose, like, you're known or your brother. Maybe he's in, in a mood that he's, subhanAllah. I said, I'm sorry, this is so-and-so. Ah, oh, mashallah, you know. So saying me is like people, they say, who is this? It's me. طيب, who are you? you know? uh, so the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he didn't like, قال, أنا, أنا. You know, what are you saying? أنا, أنا, me, me, uh, you know. Uh, so subhanAllah, sometimes people, they will be knock on the door. Always you say, who's, who's at the door? He said, me, Anna, you know. We have it. So uh, it is to be humble, to say so and so, you know, to be humble, to be so and so. And, and that's also uh, add more uh, respect, you know, because when you come to the to the doors, you know, there is behind the doors there is a hurma, hurma, which is something that is sacred, which is the hour of the people, even for your own people, for your own family, it's a hurma. You don't want to see it, you know. And there is a lot of things, Subhanallah, that that comes with this. Uh, you know, to look at someone's phone, what he has on his screen, that's not from the right etiquette. Uh, uh, even for, if you have a doubt about, you know, some of the member of the family, you try to build something, you know, if you have doubt about what they look in or watching, first you don't want to know, because that is going to hurt you deeply. But to try to make a, a plan to correct it. But do not intimidate people. I'm talking about the closest people. This is, subhanAllah, from the basics akhlaq that help us to build the brotherhood. Because without respect, without uh, regarding the privacy of each other, and uh, the, uh, you know, will be like the first priority is to protect the honor of your brother and your sister. That's the great priority in, the, in fulfilling the rights between each other. قال ومنها أن تخالق الناس بخلق حسن وتعاملهم بحسب طريقتهم فإنك إن أردت لقاء الجاهل بالعلم والأمي بالفقه والعي بالبناء آذيت وتأذيت. Now this is very important and we finish with this one and this uh, this hadith and the next hadith. Um, uh, behave with people with a good manner. However, the good manner. It's not only to be kind to people, you know, to be respectful. The good manner, the way how to talk to them. And to talk to them, it's not also, you know, like uh, uh, soft and nice. That's all the requirement, those all basics. So what this hadith is adding, or this characteristic is adding more, is to talk to them the way they understand. So for example, if someone is ignorant, do not talk to him with knowledge. And if someone does not know anything of fiqh, do not talk to him like a big words of fiqh. And if someone uh, he is not good in putting together words, do not talk to him with poetry and things. It's like this is showing off. You see? Then you're going to be hurting people, bothering people, 
and causing bother. And this is the meaning of hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam I was commanded to talk to the people based on their level, their intellect, you know. And that's why someone will ask you, even at the da'wah, someone will ask you about Islam. The best way to answer this question is to know the person first. If you nicely and kindly tell you, you know, for example, someone is saying, you know, I work, you know, a daily job by hour and everything where, you know, so this person, you know, he's at the level, he's very close to the society from the mass. Then you're going to talk to him about Islam. Maybe you're going to talk to him about the peace uh, that someone have, uh, you know, in his work. Uh, things like subhanallah very close to the word of this person it's going to be a totally different answer if you're going to answer a lawyer who asks about Islam or a professor who's going to ask about Islam or someone you know he's scientist who's going to ask about Islam totally different eh? and this is how subhanallah you talk to the people in a way to help them you know approach them into their field Qala, uh, so who is al baligh or sahib al balagh the one who's eloquent in the speech it's not the one who had the the more you know uh, vocabulary in in using in in the language or like he's very you know kind of uh, skilled into the language no it is the one who consider and regard the people their level and their situations their situation. You might talk to a person, for example, he just went through difficulty or lost a dear one. So you take that situation in consideration when you talk to them. Uh, SubhanAllah, he given us, you know, to talk to the people like a tabibu lil marid, like a doctor to someone who's sick. That's how, how someone need to address to the people around them. Uh, and we finish with this hadith. قال ليس منا من لم يوقر كبيرنا ولم يرحم صغيرنا. This is the hadith of the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم. He's not one of us, the one who does not respect our elders and have mercy on the young ones. And this is Subhanallah the banners. All what we have mentioned and more, this is what help us to fulfill the wasiya. You not be a believer or you not be able to be a believer till you love for yourself what you love for your brother. So you see, it's not about material things. It's about all of this. If you're not in a good mood, you don't want anybody to talk to you. So if someone knock the door or call the phone, you know, you're not able to do. So if, we, if you, the other line, need to understand such a thing. I know his time, I know this person there, I know he never leaves his phone. Why he's not picking up? So do not ask this question. That's it said, Ya Allah, help my brother to be in this. Ya Allah, make dua. You subhanallah, you not only make barakah to yourself, but the barakah for your brother. Why? Because you will be in the same situation and the same brother that you are calling call you. You look at the phone and you turn it down. It's like you're neglecting your brother or you hate your brother. No, you are not in the mood. And this is what you love for your brother, you love for yourself. What you love for the sister, for the sister, she love, you love for herself. These are the elements that we need to take in consideration. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to help us build such a great character and be part of our, you know, normal way of behaving. And that's how we can build truly a, a, a saint and pure brotherhood and sisterhood. Jazakumullah khairan wa barakallahu feekum. Uh, if you have any question, if not, we'll continue. There is a, a great other element incorporated into this hadith. And if you can say all the rights of a Muslim on his brother Muslim, on his uh, sister uh, Muslim, all of them uh, included are included in this hadith. Jazakumullah khair.